Afghan Hound. The Afghan Hound is a hound that is distinguished by its thick, fine, silky coat and its tail with a ring curl at the end. The breed is selectively bred for its unique features in the cold mountains of Afghanistan. Its local name is Tazi Spay, Pashto, or Sagi Tazi, Dari Persian. Other names for this breed are Tazi, Balsh Hound, Baluchi Hound, Barak Zai Hound, Shalgar Hound, Kabul Hound, Galande Hound or sometimes incorrectly African Hound. They have the ability to run and turn well. They are also 64 to 69 centimeters tall and weigh 23 to 27 kilograms. History The Afghan Hound has been identified as a basal breed that predates the emergence of the modern breeds in the 19th century. It is most closely related to the Saluki. Today's modern purebred Afghan Hound descends from dogs brought to Great Britain in the 1920s which King Aminullah of the Afghan royal family gave away as gifts. Some had been kept as hunting dogs, others as guardians. Verifiable written or visual records that tie today's Afghan hound breed to specific Afghan owners or places are absent. There is much speculation about the breed's origin and possible connections with the ancient world among fanciers and in non-scientific breed books and breed websites. Connections with other types and breeds from the same area may provide clues to the history. A name for a desert-coursing Afghan hound, Tazi, Sagi Tazi suggests a shared ancestry with the very similar Tazi breed from the Caspian Sea area of Russia and Turkmenistan. Other types or breeds of similar appearance are the Tayagan from the mountainous Yanshan region on the Chinese border of Afghanistan, and the Baraksai, or Kurum Valley Hound. There are at least 13 types known in Afghanistan, and some are being developed, through breeding and record-keeping, into modern purebred breeds. As the lives of the peoples with whom these dogs develop change in the modern world, often these landrace types of dogs lose their use and disappear, there may have been many more types of long-haired sidehound in the past. Once out of Afghanistan, the history of the Afghan hound breed became entwined with that of the very earliest dog shows in the Kennel Club, UK. Various sidehounds were brought to England in the 1800s by army officers returning from British India, which at the time included, Afghanistan, and Persia and were exhibited at dog shows, which were then just becoming popular, under various names, such as Baruxi hounds. They were also called Persian greyhounds by the English, in reference to their own indigenous sighthound. One dog in particular, Zardin, was brought in 1907 from India by Captain Bariff, and became the early ideal of breed type for what was still called the Persian greyhound. Zardin was the basis of the writing of the first breed standard in 1912, but breeding of the dogs was stopped by World War I. Out of the long-haired sidehound types known in Afghanistan, two main strains make up the modern Afghan hound breed. The first were a group of hounds brought to Scotland from Balochistan by Major and Mrs. G. Belmurray and Miss Jean C. Manson in 1920, and are called the Belmurray strain. These dogs were of the lowland or steppe type, also called Kala and are less heavily coated. The second strain was a group of dogs from a kennel in Kabul owned by Mrs. Mary Amps, which she shipped to England in 1925. She and her husband came to Kabul after the Afghan war in 1919, and the foundation sire of her kennel, named Ghazni, in Kabul was a dog that closely resembled Zardin. Her Ghazni strain were the more heavily coated mountain type. Most of the Afghans in the United States were developed from the Ghazni strain from England. The first Afghans in Australia were imported from the United States in 1934, also of the Ghazni strain. The French Breed Club was formed in 1939, Philapa. The mountain and steppe strains became mixed into the modern Afghan hound breed, and a new standard was written in 1948, which is still used today. The Afghan hound can also come with a much more patterned coat. This descends from the Belmaris and the Ghazni lines, and is displayed in much lighter feathering of coat, deeper saddle, often actually looking like a saddle, and much shorter hair on the face and neck. It is believed that these particular Afghan hounds were a product of much hotter parts of the country. The spectacular beauty of Afghan hound dogs caused them to become highly desirable show dogs and pets, and they are recognized by all of the major kennel clubs in the English-speaking world. One of the Amps Ghazni, Sirdar, won Bissett Crufts in 1928 and 1930. An Afghan hound was featured on the cover of Life magazine, November 26, 1945. Afghan hounds were the most popular in Australia in the 1970s, and won most of the major shows. An Afghan hound won BIS, Best in Show, at the 1996 World Dog Show in Budapest. Afghan hounds were BIS at the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show in 1957 and again in 1983. 
That win also marked the most recent win at Westminster for breeder owner handler, Chris Darrell. The Afghan hound breed is no longer used for hunting, although it can be seen in the sport of lure coursing. Description The Afghan hound is tall, standing in height 61 to 74 centimeters, 24 to 29 in, and weighing 20 to 27 kilograms, 44 to 60 pounds. The coat may be any color, but white markings, particularly on the head, are discouraged. Many individuals have a black facial mask. A specimen may have facial hair that looks like a Fu Manchu mustache. The mustache is called mandarins. Some Afghan hounds are almost white, but party color hounds, white with islands of red or black, are penalized in the AKC standard, but not by the FCI. The long, fine textured coat requires considerable care and grooming. The long top knot and the shorter haired saddle on the back of the dog are distinctive features of the Afghan hound coat. The high hip bones and unique small ring on the end of the tail are also characteristics of the breed. The temperament of the typical Afghan hound can be aloof and dignified, but happy and clownish when it's playing. This breed, as is the case with many sight hounds, has a high prey drive and may not get along with small animals. The Afghan hound can be a successful competitor in dog agility trials as well as an intuitive therapy dog and companion. Genomic studies have pointed to the Afghan hound as one of the oldest of dog breeds. The breed has a reputation among dog trainers of having a relatively slow obedience intelligence. Stanley Corin, in his book The Intelligence of Dogs, ranked the breed last among 138 breeds mentioned in ability to understand and obey commands, requiring more than 80 repetitions to understand a new command and obeying on the first command less than 25% of the time. Corin noted that Afghan hounds were consistently ranked among the least obedient dog breeds among all of the trainers he consulted, with a majority. 121 out of 199, ranking the Afghan hound in the lowest 10 breeds out of 133 listed. Although seldom used today for hunting in Europe and America where they are popular, Afghan hounds are frequent participants in lure coursing events and are also popular in the sport of confirmation showing. Variants The Kalog Tazi is a variety of the Afghan. It was introduced to Europe in 1920 when an Indian Army officer, Major G. Bell Murray, brought some animals back from Afghanistan. Tazi is a current and ancient name for hunting dogs of the sighthound type in the Middle East. It has been used to denote the Saluki, Afghan, Tayagan, Persian Greyhound, Greyhound types of hound. Baykamal Baykamal, also Baykamal Tazi or Tazi Baykamal, also called Aboriginal Afghan Hound, is a long-haired variety of sighthound, also classified loosely as a mountain dog, breed originating in a high-altitude area. It has been bred mostly in Russia and claimed to represent an Afghan hound aboriginal to Afghanistan. In Pashto the word Baykamal means velvet, applied in reference to the dog's silky coat, which is rather abundant and long on the whole body, except the saddle, middle to lower back, front parts of all four legs, and the muzzle. Its color is always fawn, ivory, or white, with a darker saddle, thus it produces an impression of a, yellowish, dog whose coat color matches the khaki sandstone and limestone of the Hindu Kush mountain landscape in deserts. The following colors are not permissible, red, red with white spots, black, and black with white spots. Since the 1980s, the center of Bakamal breeding is Russia, beginning in Moscow, then spreading to various other places in the CIS. The foundation stock was brought to Russia in the 1970s by military men returning from Afghanistan. Natalia Girasayova, a breeder, of the Blue Dale Albark Bakemal Kennel, and Dog Show Judge, established the National Bakemal Club, affiliated with the Russian Federation for Hunting Dogs, RFOS, and Russian Kynological Federation, RKF. A breed standard was first published in 1985, and a shared RFOS RKF revision was produced in 1997. The Bakemal is expected to be graceful powerful, with a balanced and symmetrical appearance, and to exhibit predictable and comparatively intelligent behavior, including both calm and gregariousness around people, unless trained as a guard dog, and aggressive hunting in the field. Although its coat is long, it does not require much grooming. Paws are well protected from injuries by feathering, thick additional paw fur. Its long, velvety coat and its stamina makes more suitable than many breeds for harsh weather. The breed standard calls, rather subjectively, for aristocratic carriage and a beautiful head with gazelle-like eyes. The eyes should be large, brown, slanting upwards, and of almond shape, with rims outlined black. Similar dark coloration is expected on the nose and lips, darker to match darker hair color, like fawn compared to white. 
Height, 68 to 73 centimeters, 27 to 28.5 inches, which is 65 to 70 centimeters, 25.5 to 27.5 inches. The height of the withers is 3 to 4 centimeters higher than at the croup. A Baker Mull's gait should be easy and springy. Prescribed hunting behavior, searching for prey, a Baker Mull walks or jog trots. After seeing the game, it immediately starts galloping fast with a whole body run, a full stretch, contracting to a ball, and back, covering long distances. And showing jumping power, speed, and maneuvering skill. Lifespan Bacamole has an average lifespan of 13 to 17 years male, 14 to 18 female. Closely related breeds The Saluki is a breed of the Middle East with ancient origins, though its establishment as a standardized breed was primarily carried out in the United Kingdom and Germany, and is the most closely related to the Afghan hound out of modern and internationally accepted breeds. The Saluki, with the name of the same derivation, is primarily of North African stock and is a separate breed. Health Lifespan Afghan hounds in UK surveys had an average lifespan of about 12 years, which is similar to other breeds of their size. In the 2004 UK Kennel Club survey, the most common causes of death were cancer, 31%, old age, 20%, cardiac, 10.5%, and urologic, 5%. Those that die of old age had a median lifespan of 12 years, with 12% living to at least 14. Health Concerns Major health issues are allergies, cancer, and hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia isn't typical of bacamoles. Sensitivity to anesthesia is an issue the Afghan hound shares with the rest of the sighthound group, as sighthounds have relatively low levels of body fat. Afghan hounds are also among the dog breeds most likely to develop chylothorax, a rare condition which causes the thoracic ducts to leak, allowing large quantities of chyle fluid to enter the dog's chest cavity. This condition commonly results in a lung lobe torsion, in which the dog's lung twists within the chest cavity, requiring emergency surgery, due to the breed's typically deep, barrel-shaped chest. That if not corrected through surgery, chylothorax can ultimately cause fibrosing pleuritis, or a hardening of the organs, due to scar tissue forming around the organs to protect them from the chyle fluid. Chylothorax is not necessarily, but often, fatal. Among other health problems are laryngeal paralysis, dilated cardiomyopathy, twice as common in males as females, and dermatological issues such as testosterone-responsive dermatosis of male dogs, often seen in castrated males, nasal depigmentation, also known as dudley nose, and skin tumors. Also, Afghans are prone to central diabetes insipidus, CTI, hypothyroidism and trichalamoma, a rare condition which mainly affects older dogs in the Middle Ages. Ocular conditions that can occur include medial canthal pocket syndrome, breed predisposition due to shape of head, corneal dystrophy, cataract and generalized progressive retinal atrophy, GPRA. Afghan myelopathy, causing pelvic limb ataxia, is sometimes reported. In popular culture, because of its distinctive appearance, the Afghan hound has been represented in animated feature films and TV shows, including Universal Pictures Balto, Sylvie, and Disney's Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure, Ruby, an Afghan hound also appeared on 101 Dalmatians as well as in 102 Dalmatians as one of the dogs in Cruella de Vil's party in the television series What a Mess, Prince Amir of Kinjan, based on children's books by Frank Muir, and, as Prissy in the 1961 Disney animated film 101 Dalmatians and 101 Dalmatians 2. Patches London Adventure. Brainy Barker from Crypto the Superdog claims to be an Afghan hound in the episode Meet the Dog Stars, although her design actually resembles that of a Saluki instead of an Afghan hound. Mallory Archer in the show Archer had an Afghan hound named Duchess at some point during the childhood of her son, Sterling Archer. The dog is a point of contention between the two, due to Mallory's apparent preference for it over her son. Afghan hounds have also been featured in television advertisements and in fashion magazines. The Afghan hound is represented in books as well, including being featured in a series of mystery novels by Nina Wright, Abra, and a talking Afghan hound in David Rothman's The Solomon Scandals, 2008, Twilight Times books. In the novel Between the Acts, Virginia Woolf uses an Afghan hound, named Saurabh, to represent aspects of one of the book's human characters. On August 3, 2005, Korean scientist Huang Wu-suk announced that his team of researchers had become the first team to successfully clone a dog, 
an Afghan hound named Snuppy. In 2006 Huang Wuzuk was dismissed from his university position for fabricating data in his research. Snuppy, nonetheless, was a genuine clone, and thus the first clone dog in history. The Afghan hound features prominently in the avant-garde music video of popular French band M83's, Set in Stone, M83 Remix. M83's, Set in Stone, M83 Remix. M83's, Set in Stone.